So today let's look at how to solve equations where the unknown appears on both sides of the equation. Um, now these aren't horribly difficult, you just have to know how to deal with having the unknown on both sides, but you have to be super careful um, because sometimes very strange things happen when the unknown is on both sides. Um, we're going to start off with some basic level examples just to see the technique. So first things first, let's write an equation down. Um, and the way to uh, deal with the unknown appearing on both sides of the equation is just to use either the addition or subtraction property of equality. Okay, so, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add or subtract off the term with the variable to one side of the equation. So I see I have a 4x minus a 7 equaling an x, and so what I want to do is I want to move this x to that side of the equation. Now I just can't physically move it because that's not how equations work. I, I can only use the properties of equality. So I'm going to pick um, the subtraction property of equality and I'm going to choose to subtract off x from both sides, which I can totally do. Um, and what happens is those x's are gone and there's nothing left on this side so it's now equal to zero. And so then I have x or 4x minus x, and I don't get 4 left over. I have 4x's, and I take away 1x, which means I have 3x's left over and a minus 7. And so now I have this two-step equation. I can add 7 to both sides. Those are gone. And I get 3x equals 7. Divide both sides by 3. Those 3's are gone. And I get x equals 7 thirds. And all I'm using are my poses. Nothing fancy, just apo, depo, and spo. Um, and so I need to check my answer though. Um, and checking these answers are a little bit different because you have to make sure that both sides is equivalent, or, or both sides are equivalent. So four times seven thirds minus seven um, equals uh, seven thirds, and it does. So this side equals seven thirds. That side equals seven thirds. So that means I did the problem correctly. And so then I can write. I can check it, and I can say that my answer is 7 thirds. So the key, and the only new thing that you have to know, is that if the unknown appears on both sides, you want to subtract it or add it to both sides of the equation using apo or spo to, to get rid of it off of one side, to zero out the variable on that side. And you can add or subtract to whatever side you want. Um, so if I have 19x minus 18 equals 22x plus 12, I can, I need to get rid of, I need to either get rid of the 19x on this side, or I need to get rid of the 22x on this side. And I can choose either one. Um, now, I'm the kind of person who knows the kind of mistakes I make, because I've been doing math longer than any of you guys have been alive. Um, so I know that uh, I'm prone to make a sign mistake. So when I subtract or add to both sides, I want to try to pick the side where the x will stay positive, just because I know I'm going to drop a negative sign. So I can either subtract off 19 from both sides and zero it off of this side, or I can subtract off 22x from both sides and zero it off from this side. But I know that 22 is bigger than 19, so I'm going to pick subtracting off 19x from both sides, because what that does is it cancels off those x's, and all I'm left with over here is a negative 18, 22 minus 19 is 3x, and then I get plus 12. And so then I have a two-step equation. Now, I personally don't mind the x being on this side. I don't care what side it's on. But I know there are some people who have to have the unknown on the left side. And if you are that person, and you're like, oh, no, 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 the x needs to be on this side of the equal, then you can just use that symmetric property of equality. Um, and just rewrite it as 3x plus 12 equals negative 18. I can totally do that. It's called symmetric po. Um, and now I can just go ahead and solve like I normally would. It's just a two-step equation. Subtract off 12 from both sides. And I get 3x equals negative 30. Divide both sides by 3. And I get x equals negative 10. And all I'm using are the po's. So this is po again. And this one was depo. Now, before I go ahead and just, I'm done with things, I want to check it first. So what I need to do is I need to plug in my answer to this side and plug it into that side and make sure the two sides are equal. So 19 times negative 10 minus 18 
gives me a negative 208. So when I try this side, I better get a negative 208. So 22 times negative 10 plus 12 gives me a negative 208. So therefore that answer has been checked and verified so that I know my solution is negative 10. Box it off, happy face. So when I have unknowns on both sides, I'm either gonna add or subtract it from both sides. Now these examples both had subtraction um, just because that's the way I designed them. Um, now we're gonna look at an example where strange things happen. Um, and these are going to show up. I'm going to disguise them. I'm not going to make them them obvious. I'm going to disguise them by having you uh, do something like combining like terms or distribution. Um, and you're going to see what's going to happen. So let's look at an example where weird things happen. All right. So I have 6x minus 9 equals x plus 5 times the quantity x plus 2. So I look at this, it's not simplified. I'm not gonna divide the whole thing by five because it's gonna put a fraction there, a fraction there, and a fraction there. So I don't wanna do that, that's horrible and disgusting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the five. Two hamsters. Um, and so then I get six x minus nine equals x plus five times x plus five times two using my distributive property. I get six x minus nine equals x plus 5x plus 10 using my substitution. And then um, I'm starting to see something weird happen because I get a 6x minus 9 over there. And if I had x plus 5x, I get 6x's over here too, and then a plus 10. And all I did was I combined like terms. And in combining like terms, I see something's wrong. There is no number on the planet that when I multiply it by 6 and subtract 9, it's exactly the same thing as multiplying that number by 6 and adding 10. Um, so I know right here something is wrong because mathematically that's impossible. Now, if you don't notice that, I can keep going. I can go ahead and treat this like, a, like I, oh, no, I have two instances of the unknown on both sides, and what do I do? I'm going to subtract off it from both sides. And oh no, they're all gone, and I'm left with negative 9 equals 10, um, which I know is so, 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 so not true. So what this means, it doesn't mean I did anything wrong. And I go through my work, and I can check it, and I can verify that I've indeed done everything correctly. But there's something wrong with this. There's no way negative 9 equals 10. That's not equal. And so what that means is that this wasn't equal, that this was an equal, that this was an equal, and then my entire equation in the very beginning was never equal. So I was given an equation that's unsolvable. That means there's no number that you can plug in, real or imaginary, that's gonna make this thing true. So that equal sign was never true. And it always appears, whenever I give you a problem like this, it's always gonna appear uh, like this. You're going to get something that is obviously not true. And no matter how far you go, you're going to keep getting things that are obviously not true. So what this means is that you literally have no solution. And that is your box it off happy face answer. Now, of course, there is a mathematical notation for this. I don't have to write the words no solution. I can do this in solution set notation. And there happens to be a set that's empty. And I can write it like this. This means the same thing. There's nothing in there. That's because there's no answer that works. I put the answer that works inside the bracket and uh, or braces, and there's nothing there. That's called the empty set. Now, for those of you who don't like writing the curly Q braces, there's actually a symbol for this. So if you want to, you can also write it like that. Because this zero with the line through it actually means the empty set. So this zero with the line through it means the empty set. And so these three notations all mean the exact same thing. So whenever you solve an equation like this and the variables drop off, or you're left with something that's so obviously not equal, um, there's no solution. There never was an answer. You were given an equation that would never have a solution. So you can write the words no solution, or you can use one of these symbolic notations to mean the exact same thing. So that's one of the weird things that can happen when you have unknowns on both sides. However, it's not the only weird thing that can happen. Something else can happen. Um, and you can kind of anticipate where I'm going here. 
Um, if I have 5x minus 3 times the quantity, x plus 2 equals 2x minus 6. All right, so this is a little more complicated, and I would say this is a three hamster level difficulty. Um, so when I do this, I look at this and I want to, I got to remember that I'm not di distributing a 3 here. I'm actually distributing negative 3. And the reason why this is a three hamster problem is because I have to remember that, and then I have to distribute, and then I have to combine like terms. So there's a lot of steps involved here. Um, and so then I'm going to distribute my negative 3. I get 5x plus negative 3 times x plus negative 3 times 2 equals 2x minus 6. And then I'm going to do my multiplication. I get 5x plus negative 3x plus negative 6 equals 2x minus 6. Now, I can start to anticipate what's going to happen next without writing it down. So 5x plus negative 3x is going to be 2x, and hey, there's a minus 6. So if I combine like terms, I get this. And if I use my definition of subtraction, I get this. Oh, hey, wait a minute. These are exactly the same thing, 2x minus 6 is equal to 2x minus 6. And so I can plug in 1 there, and it's going to work. I can plug in 2, it's going to work. 3, it's going to work. 4, it's going to work. I can plug in a pi for x, and it's going to work. Because what is happening is I'm given two expressions at the very beginning that were actually equal. So this thing here actually simplifies to 2x minus 6. And so I have the exact same expression on either side. And whenever this happens, I'm going to get any number that's going to work. And so I can go further. If I add 6 to both sides, I'm going to get 2x equals 2x. If I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals x. And so that's uh, like an identity. I get the exact same thing over and over again. And so no matter where I am, I'm getting two things that are equal. And so when I write my solution down, I have to think, well, what numbers work for x? And in this case, the solution is all real numbers. because I can plug in any number I want and it's going to work. Now, we have, a, uh, we have a, a symbol for this whole all real numbers thing that we used for domain and range. And so to write this sentence in solution set notation is just to use that curly Q R or the special fancy R. It's actually called a chalkboard R. Um, and so I can use that. And I can check these with the calculator. Um, um, what I can do is, uh, you know, I realize that these two expressions are equal, and so that means I need to check this expression here, 5x minus 3 times x plus 2 as y1, and I type in as y2, 2x minus 6, and I go to the table, and they're identical. So whenever you have a situation like this where both sides of the equation were actually equal, um, you can check it like you would check solving or simplifying the expressions we did earlier uh, in this in chapter three. Um, I can type this in and type that in and make sure it's the same. And if it is, that means all real numbers are going to work. Now these are harder to check, and you pretty much have to go through your work to make sure you did this correctly. So when you get the no solution one, uh, you can't plug in a number and check to make sure it works. You're going to really have to go through your work and make sure it does work. Um, so just be really careful with that. That's one of the problems with, with unknowns on both sides is when you have one of these special cases. So this is a special case where you get no solution because it was never equal to begin with. And the second special case is uh, when you were actually given two expressions that were, were identical and your solution is all real numbers. And then remember how you, how you take care of variables on both sides you either add or subtract a variable term from both sides, and that's all you have to do.